so you guys are in the upstairs. Uh, if you look at the top map, you're in the south guest bedroom because that one was a bit more hospitable than the uh, north guest bedroom was. You had gotten in there, you started setting up your little camp uh, because it was too nasty outside to go back home, even if some of you wanted to. Um, so the storm is still raging outside quite nicely. You're going to start a fire, and then all of a sudden you notice a latch in the uh, the fireplace. Uh, Robert, I'm trying to re-remember everyone's character names. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's where, oh, and then as you were trying to start a fire in the fireplace and noticing the latch, um, somebody else, I believe it was Gene, found that article in the newspaper inside the cupboard that said that, uh, it was the details about the Arthur Kerwin guy that murdered his family in this house. So from the, uh, Prosper Go Grove, the Prosper Cove Gazette. Um, so yeah, so we, we leave off. We're in this, uh, room. It's raining outside. Um, the, you guys are all doing those things. Uh, uh, Zero's probably, he's regathering his courage because of, he got a little spooked by that weird, scary, murdery note he found in the attic. Uh, and I'll, uh, it, is there anything you guys would like to do? You have <laughs> just two clarify, scenes of the four scenes filmed. Sorry, just to clarify, we, um... We know that people were murdered in this house, but didn't we just find out that something specifically about the murder? Uh, well, a couple. Of, well, you, you've you kind of discovered a few things about the murder. If uh, there's a couple murders that you figured out, so uh, the first one that you remember is that the guy you're here to like make a homework assignment about, Lawrence Coswell, he murdered his wife and killed himself in this house. Um, unexplained why. You're, apparently there's a journal somewhere that might explain it, but it's hidden. Um, the other thing that you know is that there was another family down the road named uh, the Kerwins. Arthur Kerwin killed his entire family and then went missing. Um, and he and you guys know he killed his family with an axe. That's the one. Yeah. That was uh, one. You found his crazy murder note where he scribbled things to himself in blood uh, in the attic, and then you found more details about an article posted inside of one of the cupboards. Um, as far as anybody else who's died in this house goes, uh, there was the... I forget their last names. Franklins. Uh, they were just an old couple who just died. They didn't, like, have... They didn't murder each other or anything. They were really boring in comparison to everyone else. <laughs> but they were the most recent people to own this house, and I believe they owned it in about the 80s. Um, and it's the 90s now, so they, it, the house has been abandoned for at least 15 years. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, my dasher is approaching, by the way, so <laughs> That's fine. in a minute or two. Sorry, guys. All right, I think if I remember, we had kind of left it off that we were going to try to rest for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were in front of the fireplace. You were thinking about resting because you were setting up camp. Um, again, the, the things that happened right before we ended were you found a latch inside the fireplace, um, and then, uh, and then the, the article, and those were the only two things. So camp is basically being made, like, you're rolling out, like, any supplies that you found around the house that you could sleep on, you're rolling out, like, bed mats and all that stuff, so. Didn't I have a key? You do! You found a I'm key try... in the trophy room. I'm gonna see if the key matches the lock. You can give a quick glance to it. Um, the fire, he did manage to start the fire before we ended last time. Uh, the fire is not um, so high that you can't look inside a little bit to see the latch at least. Now that you know where to even look for it or that it even exists. Um, and it does look like it has a keyhole in it. Okay, so I guess I'll save that for the morning when the fire dies. Good work. And I think I was really committed to finding out more about this murderer and, I think, like, solving this mystery once and for all. Yeah, yeah, that, that's where your resolve kicked back in because now you feel like you almost have a personal stake in it. Um, yeah. So as you guys are kind of doing all that stuff, suddenly, uh, without warning, you're sitting in front of the fireplace, you're looking at the, the latch inside the fireplace, all of a sudden the fire just goes out, like... <sighs> Like, almost like a candle being blown out. And as as you're sitting there, you hear the rain coming down outside the door, all, uh, or outside the window to the, to the right. And all of a sudden, you can see uh, this light kind of starting to come through the, the boarded up panes on the window. Oh, it's not a purple light, is it? It is a blue light 
but then it goes away, away and then it's a red light and then it goes away and then it's a blue light again is it the cops it yeah is it the cops, cops? And, all right well i can i peek out the window yeah you can peek uh did you want to be sneaky about it or did you just want to look Oh, Let's I think be you want to be sneaky. sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, roll body sneak for me. When in doubt, be sneaky. <laughs> dice running away. I lost the dice. Hold on. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. There was a thing. It ran away. Started. I don't know where it went. Oh, God. There was a thing we used to do when we were playing Pathfinder called the Jumanji roll, where basically one time per session, we can take our D20, yell Jumanji, and just whip it, and then wherever it landed and whatever it landed on is what we got. <laughs> Didn't really nice. add anything, but it just felt nice. <laughs> Be back in two minutes, guys. Okay. Okay. Um, I got two successes, but I also have a two um, sneak. Oh, so, yeah, but you got two successes, so you're good. Yeah, um, okay. So what you could do is you only needed one success to, to do it. You can buy an effect. Um, you can either give an effect to another kid so somebody else can sneak with you if you want, or uh, you can find something unexpected or more of what you were looking for. Uh, well, I think I'm just looking at the cop, so probably something unexpected. Okay. So, uh, when you, uh, you start to peek through the window very carefully, making sure not too much of your head is being shown, and you look outside, uh, and you see a squad car pull up on that dirt road where, uh, Gene earlier that day had seen old tire tracks. So there is kind of a dirt road that can get you here, but it seems, a lot of people don't really know about its existence as much as they used to, so, cause it's so, it's been out of use for decades now. Um, but, uh, you, you see these, this squad car pull up, and the lights are flashing, uh, and everything like that, and then, um, uh, somebody gets out of the car, and they're, they have a, an umbrella, and they have a megaphone in their hands, they're looking around at the house, uh, they, they motion, and then somebody else gets out of the car, he's got an umbrella, and he's got a flashlight in his hand, and, uh, the guy with the flashlight's just kind of shining it everywhere over the house seeing if there's anybody there and the guy with the megaphone says uh, uh is hello hello are there any children inside is there a gene inside your mother is worried is there a gene inside this house <laughs> uh, i have a flashlight i'm gonna flash my flashlight out the window all right and, like, you, wave it you do that and the weirdest thing is that they don't seem to notice at okay. all. So what's <laughs> even weirder is the guy with the flashlight shines the flashlight directly onto the room. Like, it, it gets on uh, Ash's face. Like, so you would think that he would see her, but he doesn't. They're both just looking at the house like it's completely empty. And he just goes, Gene, if you're in there, please give us a sign that you're in here or come out. It is dangerous to be in this house after dark. And they're looking around. And you see one of them pull out a walkie-talkie and he says something into it. And they sit there for a second, they kind of talk to each other. And then you see them get back in the squad car and drive away. It's a ghost house, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, it's a ghost house! <laughs> oh fuck, guys. Still haven't found a uvula, though. What? Um, <laughs> from Monster oh, yeah. House. Oh, so it's a girl house. It's a <laughs> um... So Jean's definitely a little more freaked out now before she was chalking it all up to drunk uh, seniors. But this this is weird. Yeah, you know that they specifically called for you, and but you do remember that you told your mom that you would be here. Yeah. Um, so maybe that was her response to being like, she should have been home by now, where is she? Um, but yeah. the fact that they didn't see you at all, even though you tried to do something, that does make you a little scared, doesn't it? So probably yeah. mark yourself scared on your sheet. Okay. That's freaky. I like freaky, how he freaky. asked you, like, are you, you think you're scared, right? Now, tell, on a scale of one to ten, how scared are you exactly right now? <laughs> Let's get Can that I get up a to about an recap? eight. And this is still the night. What time What time I around say are it's we? about 11 o'clock at night now, so the rain's oh, way still past coming down. Time. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's spooky time. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, the rain's coming down and everything. The fireplace is now uh, open, I guess you can say. <laughs> and there you are.
Well, now that the fire's out, do we want to try to relight it, or do we want to look at that creepy little door? Let's go look at that door. <laughs> zero ain't afraid of no door. Door is you can afraid open of it zero. <laughs> door is afraid of zero. I'm not trapped in here with door. Door is trapped um, in here with me. Let me. I want. <laughs> I want to try my key again since the fire is out. Sure. Yeah. You you push it in and it feels like it works. Okay, I'm gonna so ready my it. shovel. <laughs> All right. So I unlock it. Open the box. So you hear a, and then like what sounds like some kind of ancient mechanism, like like gears moving and everything like that. And the brick wall, uh, some dust comes out, and then the brick wall behind the fireplace slowly starts to mo move open. And uh, <laughs> as it starts to open on the inside, uh, something immediately falls out on the, uh, right in front of you guys. And it's too dusty to see at the moment because of all the dust and cobwebs that were in there. But uh, how do you immediately react to that? Move out uh, of the way because it's totally yeah. a skeleton. Yeah, it's totally I'm... a skeleton. We jump back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is definitely a skeleton. <laughs> so there is a, a a skeleton. It just kind of fell out of the wall a little bit. It's laying on its back. It's almost like its head is staring directly at Jean as it's uh, as it falls on its back. And then what you see when the dust kind of settles is it looks like this is kind of a secret little hideaway hole uh, that was behind the wall. Oh, speaking I of which, you, if you're not want... scared yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking skeleton. <laughs> so, um, but uh, 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 what's it called? Um, what you see inside of this little room, it's kind of like the size of a closet. Um, and it's f made out of bricks. There's a shaft that leads up uh, really high up. Um, there's scratch marks all over the wall, just like all over the place. Um, and what you also see in this room is an axe propped up against the back corner of it. But then, what you also find is a book lying down in the middle of the room. Um, I shine a flashlight at the book. It just looks like an old journal. It looks a little bit like the expedition journals that you saw in the library. I'm super like... scared, but I can't resist seeing what the book is. <laughs> <laughs> I must read the book. <laughs> So as, I would like to invest, oh, yeah. I would like to investigate the pelvis of the skeleton to find out if it is a woman or a man. I love that you're creepy enough to do that because you're the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> it is a man. <laughs> All right. That's great. That's fantastic. Only the weirdo would bring that up. Um, so at this point, I have the camera turned on and I have it pointed at zero and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm educating myself. <laughs> hey. I think it is important to know how, who this person was, but also if if we're going to determine what moves to go next, I, I like any valuable information is is necessary. Zero is weird enough that he would be one of help. <laughs> he went right to the help. I, I read a lot of books at the library. Ew. <laughs> Ooh, oh. nerd. <laughs> so, Jean, did you go to get the book? Um, I While mean, if anyone's reacting... <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's reacting really fast, then they're faster. I'm going very cautiously. I feel like nobody would be super gung-ho to jump into a place that had a... I'm not going to fight Jean for a book. <laughs> <laughs> so as you bend okay. down to pick up this book, you hear what sounds like a whisper, and it says... <laughs> you pick up the book oh, man. you're welcome <laughs> does only Jean hear it or do the rest of us hear it uh, I would say I only Jean heard it like, okay. like behind the door like... <laughs> yeah. I want to say only Jean heard it because she was the one closest to the, sh the room um, everybody else was like skeleton <laughs> That's a dead man. <laughs> oh, we don't know it's a man yet. Only Zero knows. Zero knows. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's a man. Okay, weirdo. I think we can imagine who that is. <laughs> okay, weirdo. That's great. <laughs> Alrighty, so you have the book now. 
Okay. Um, I'm assuming um, it's that last journal. Is there is there a title? Yes. Uh, when you open up the front page, it says uh, Lawrence Coswell Expedition Journal, Peru, and then whatever date I said that he did that. <laughs> <laughs> 19 something 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 20 something no it was the before 30s. world war ii yeah no it was actually it was yeah pr before world war ii but after world war one um but uh yeah it's a long time ago um hey guys i found the lost journal i immediately turned the camera towards gene can i show you the what's it called the nameplate the, oh um, the, the we'll finally plate. get some answers or be haunted um, for life, you know. Whatever happens first. Why not both? <laughs> I, I say we should. I say we should relight the fire so we can read it. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Forgot good idea. idea. Right. Put the cool. flashlight toward it. <laughs> I'm just immediately like far away from the skeleton, but I start hunkering down and reading immediately by the flashlight while, while zero tries to light the fire. Are you just gonna sit in the closet and wait and read the book? <laughs> like, closet is a very cozy guest room <laughs> sounds good so um uh i rewrote this journal for this version of the game so i'm just i don't have a digital version to share with you guys so i'm just gonna read it for you really quick um it says to those reading the uh you you turn to like basically the last page to figure out why he would have put this in this weird little crevice why you would have hidden it to begin with and all that stuff because you you had a lot of hype leading up to you finding this journal knowing that it was like purposely hidden and even sebastian goodsir his own nephew couldn't find this book um yeah so you turn to like the final entry and it says to those reading this who have found my journal i'm afraid you're in grave danger in my recent expedition to the amazons of peru arthur cornthwaite and our team uncovered the ancient temple of czar Unlocking this sacred place, we quickly learned it was not a temple, it was a cage. A cage we just opened. Uh, Czar had infected our minds, and it made me kill the entire expedition team. And dear lord have mercy on me, I brought it back to Prosper Cove with me. It made me kill my <laughs> wife. It now lives in the walls of this old house. I managed to trap it here using an incantation I discovered. Should keep it dormant, but the veil weakens every 30 years. Czar may, be, may manifest during that time. It takes the form of its victims. If you, confront, uh, if you confront this beast, speak the incantation to manifest it in the flesh. From there, maybe you can end it where I couldn't. I can't live with the things Czar made me do. This is goodbye. I am so sorry. <laughs> and then there's also an incantation written down for you to, for you to say. First okay. off, first off, it's very ironic that he used the word grave danger, and now he's a skeleton. Hey, <laughs> I'm a, I don't think that's him. <laughs> um, oh, the skeleton so I, isn't I, him. No, it's the other guy, the guy with the oh. axe. Oh, okay. Speaking of which, where's so, that axe? Did we leave it in the attic? No, it was no, it's still in the little room. Attic. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, right. Or in the little room with the axe. Not there anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh cool, cool, cool. And when you look so up in I the journal, you just see that that room's completely empty. Okay. Um, so I, like, um, say the incantation, like, 20 times and, like, try to get you guys to memorize it. Okay, what's the incantation? Okay. <laughs> I think we should record Klaatu, it. Varata, Niktu. <laughs> fair. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, basically, uh, so you say the incantation out loud? Yeah. So the second you do that, all of a sudden you hear above you what sounds like a door creak open and then footsteps walking all the way down where you know the attic staircase is. And then they walk up to the door to the guest bedroom and they stop. I pour the holy water into my super soaker and start pumping it super fast. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have known that holy water would have come in handy? Okay, Zero this is cool. new. This is very cool. This is so cool. I'm so okay with this. this is really cool. School, 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 school. Yeah. I kind of wish we had brought that salt with us now. So, uh, 
uh, Robert, you you got the shovel, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you should go check it out. I need my um, hands free. Someone else should open the door for me. My, my <laughs> weapon's a long distance weapon, so. <laughs> I'm Ranger. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I go to the door, and I the way I open it is that I get behind the door as it opens, but I crouch so like, down a little. Like that kind of thing? Like if, uh, so I'm like behind the door, not in front of it when he, when, you know, when I open the door. That makes sense. <laughs> so you, you do that. Everybody's really tense. You go to open the door, you slowly creak it open and everybody's got their weapons trained on the door. <laughs> um, Jean's just holding the book. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really know Hopefully what to a do. flashlight. Yeah, a flashlight in yeah, the book. Flashlight. <laughs> just reciting the incantation over and over again, just muttering it under her breath. <laughs> and yeah. what you see when you open the door is a figure. There's something there on the other side of the door, but you can't quite totally make it out. Uh, does somebody have a flashlight? I have a flashlight. Okay, so you shine it up, and really quick, it's a, the donkey head. The donkey head that was in the trophy room. Butters. It's just, it's on the wall like opposite of the door now it wasn't it was in the trophy room but now it's just there and that's it oh that's just not right what a goddamn ass <laughs> <laughs> um so i'm still any... saying the incantation if that helps <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, I, sp I spray it a little bit with my holy water. <laughs> Nothing happens. Now it's a wet donkey head. Now it's a wet ass. <laughs> Wampy ass. <laughs> Wampy ass. <laughs> I'd like to like investigate my surroundings and do that sense for danger thing. Sure. Uh, I think that would be. Let's see. Uh, roll mind investigate. Okay. And anybody can help them with this if they want. Hopefully someone helps me because that's zero successes. Um, I'll do it. Yeah, too. Um, me too. But then minus one for being scared, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. I got one. Alrighty, so everybody kind of sheepishly peeks their head out of the door and looks around. Ash, um, you got a success. Jean, did you get any successes? I got three successes. Fuck. Ow. Um, so, oh, because Ash only got one, we'll go with you first. You can ask, what is hidden here and what is it? Uh, what does it mean? What has happened here? Uh, how can I get into, out of, or past something? What threats can I perceive here, or where is it? Do as many as oh. possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, didn't I also have one from my last roll with the cops? No, that was, uh, you, you learned something unexpected, and basically it was the fact that they actually got out of the car and looked around, and you heard them oh, actually okay. say Gene and everything like that. Cool. Okay. Um... Well, the last one is the only one I remember, so where is it? Where is it? Okay, so you look around um, to see if there's uh, anything that would have sounded like the figure that walked upstairs down here. You I do swear notice... to God, if I hear braying, I'm going <laughs> <laughs> um, to... Uh, you don't see anything that would make a sound like that. The house looks just as empty as it did before. And then uh, for Jean... Uh, your your questions you can ask again because she already asked where is it. Uh, what is hidden here and what is it? Uh, and you get three of these because you got three successes. What does it mean? What happened here? How can I get into, out of, or past something? Or what threats can I perceive here? What threats can I perceive here? What threats can you perceive here? Let's see. Um, you don't see any threats. The it looks. I mean, even when lightning flashes occasionally, the house looks extremely eerie. But you can see everything relatively decently. There's <laughs> nothing in the house at this moment. Um, okay. So yeah, there. It doesn't seem like there was a figure there at all. 
What happened here? What happened here is it looks like somebody took the donkey head from the trophy room and put it in front of the door to the... <laughs> um, and also, uh, uh, you can see that there are footsteps directly mm -hmm. underneath where you're standing. They come to the door, but they don't go away from the door. Ooh, say the incantation. Yeah, I'm saying the incantation. You're good. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys, it's really weird that there are footsteps here that don't match any of ours. Cause yeah, they're, they're way big, too big. big people shoes. Because <laughs> <I have laughs> we're little people. Yes. <laughs> I have a hypothesis. Who is the guy who shows up here all the freaking time? Kyle. Kyle? Buff. I think Buff? Kyle's fucking with us, guy. <laughs> <laughs> It better be him, because the alternative is less fun. Maybe he's been here so many times. Maybe he knows. Maybe there's, maybe there's more to these walls than we think. Maybe he's ducking in out. Like you know, like you know, like the bootleggers where they have like secret compartments in the walls. I mean, I know I'm kind of out here with this with this idea, but that's just me. <laughs> so he was a murderer and a bootlegger. <laughs> That was really good. Why aren't we doing a, an assignment about this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying Kyle is is trying to scare us. I'm not saying he's a murderer. I just think Kyle is messing with us. Dick. That's a possibility. Sounds like something right up his alley. Um, yeah, but how did he disappear off the spot without walking away, though? That was my suggestion that maybe there's maybe there's secret corridors. Scooby-Doo style. Scooby-Doo style. All right. Well, <laughs> at this point, we can either close the attic again and close the door and try to go <laughs> to rest or sit in fear for the rest of the night. <laughs> okay with sitting and fearing for the rest of the night. You know, going to sleep is probably out of the question at this point. I think whether we leave or if we don't leave, this is going to continue to happen. So we should investigate and see what's going on. I would like to read one of the journal to see if it says anything about how to get rid of Zar. Uh, it just says once it's manifested in the flesh, it can something can happen to it. But he didn't manage to, to kill it. He just managed to trap it. Thanks a lot, dead guy. Yeah. Not helpful. And Super he did helpful, say that dude. this ha every 30 years the veil weakens to trapping uh, Zar. How long has it been? Oh, I don't know. 90 30 years? 30 years? 90 <laughs> years. Since, since Lawrence Coswell died? Yeah. I'm confused, though. He died between World War One and World War Two, right? I don't remember the exact dates, okay? But... <laughs> I remember I did the math enough to work it out that it's a 30-year curse and it comes okay. under that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, zero's not great with math, but that doesn't seem right. <laughs> Maybe it's 60 years. If it was Could 1930, 1930, 60 years would make sense. There you go. Yeah, it was 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dean, oh. you're reading the book? Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't seem very helpful. Okay, so the plan, if I'm not mistaken, is we got to find Zul. <laughs> Zul? <laughs> Are you we got to find master? this monster and say the incantation in front of the monster. Is that, was that what he said? Yeah, but we shouldn't split up because it says it can take different forms or whatever. So we don't want to get confused and think it's one of us. That's smart. Yep. All right, where do we want to go? There's still a bunch of rooms we haven't looked in, or you still we want to go back to the trifle room. You can fill for your movie, if that even matters. At this point. Yeah, I mean, I think the scene. Well, we just filmed one of the uh, secret rooms, so I think we only have one scene left. I thought we were filming the. I thought we were filming the book when it came out in the skeleton. I thought that's yeah. Were we that's doing a that? scene. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That counts. Yeah, as we a did scene. that already. Okay. That's a scene. Uh, so somebody write down. Let's say, how do you want to spin that scene? Like, how does it relate to Lawrence Coswell's life, or how does it relate to the video you're making? I, so just to be clear, finding of his journal. The finding of his journal. So you're acting and Lawrence like Lawrence Coswell isn't dead, right? That was. This is somebody else who's dead. Oh, the skeleton. The skeleton was someone else. <laughs> okay. But just making uh, sure. Yeah, it wasn't Lawrence Coswell, but uh, Lawrence Coswell is dead. He's been dead forever. Um, <laughs> he made sure of that. And and we found his journal. Yeah. Yeah, so the discovery yeah. of his journal then. 
Yeah, oh yeah, well that's right. If we're if we're trying to record it from like his point of view, it can be like maybe the writing, the writing and the hiding of the journal, kind of in reverse. That could work. Yeah, this gave us this this gave us a task to do to try to to try to solve this. So I think that's a good scene. There you go. Yeah. So somebody write down Lawrence Coswell writes his journal. Who was writing it down last time? I don't remember. I, wrote I mean, you know, necessarily have to remember it, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one more scene and you get an A, but uh, well maybe you get at least what did I say? You get at least a C. There's something else. B. I think it's B. A B. Okay, B. there's something else that bumps it up to an A if you do it, but uh, you'll know when it happens. But well, um, for me, zero. It's more important to find out what happened. Yeah, I mean at yeah. this point, something creepy's going on. I don't know how much homework matters anymore, but it is an option. <laughs> also, I took this pass no pass, so. <laughs> so Ash is distracted looking at something and I like whisper into the camera like my last advice to my parents because I'm convinced I'm gonna die <laughs> it's oh, like the Blair Witch Project that got real dark <laughs> I mean it's really dark already but that got real dark <laughs> it's like the, your nose is dripping you're starting to scratch it's really scary <laughs> <laughs> if I die I'm gonna give my scooter to my younger sister <laughs> My parents could keep all of my books, but don't donate them because I don't trust people with my books. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> erased my Super Mario RPG save file. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys are doing that, because uh, the balcony kind of goes like an L shape around the corner, um, you see that raccoon from earlier. It's just kind of standing a little eerily. You know how raccoons can can, can stand on their two feet? The two feet. It's just doing that. <laughs> staring at you from across the balcony so like you, uh if the if the bedroom's here and the balcony's here uh it's like over here just sitting at the edge of the balcony looking at you and you just noticed it because it's a little dark creature so it can blend in with the shadows a little bit but I'm yeah gonna call it right now the raccoon's the monster oh no <laughs> robert shovel it again shovel it again <laughs> <laughs> you know what screw it i'm gonna go after the raccoon with the shovel it immediately runs away Perfect. I feel stronger now. <laughs> you see it. Run... He get his scared away. Move removed. <laughs> <laughs> you see it run down the stairs and into the uh, what's it called? Really quick. The uh, kind of in the direction of like the cloakroom and the storage and the study. If you're looking at the map, uh, and you hear when it gets down there, you hear what sounds like a door slam, and then all of a sudden, like a kind of a weird scream huh. that's that was ominous guys <laughs> i was gonna say i got rid of my scared by showing some bravery but it's back again there it is what <laughs> kind of scream uh like a like an animal scream okay if you were gonna say like a woman's scream, I'd be like, "Okay, guys, I'm out." I'm <laughs> Fuck <screaming>. this! <laughs> like this, I've had enough. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, I think it is. Just died on his own. <laughs> By the way, this I think it's all, it's super impressive that none of you have had to go to the bathroom this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Zero definitely doesn't. There's proof. <laughs> In fact, he's Sitting probably beat down. himself like three more times since the start, and just nobody would know. <laughs> oh, God. It was all the Gatorade. Mountain Dew. Tang. <laughs> all the tang. The tang. <laughs> it's DNL. I don't know if anybody knows that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get one extra. Yeah, do you have any conditions? You're, you're muted. Me? I think I have scared left over from the last time. Give yourself, just because you have something 90s within your hand shot, give yourself a free. <laughs> you yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Do I have Especially anything else? it's fucking tang. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, have I didn't even else? have that when it was the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know right I, now, I did not have it during the 90s. My me, parents did not want to spend the money did. on it. <laughs> yeah, slumber parties with DNL, that shit, we never slept. <laughs> Just playing perfect dark. <laughs> Golden <Yes>. eye. <laughs> but yeah, so you're standing in front of the doorway, you heard that scream, a little raccoon was being kind of weird, and you guys are kind of here in this weird moment of not sure what to do. 
Uh, yeah. Robert didn't run that far away, right? So no, he's, he's just at us? the end of the balcony. Okay. Well, guys, uh, compatriots, companions, fellow adventurers, right. <laughs> what's <a> you? <laughs> Lovers, countrymen. <laughs> I defer. I defer to you all. <laughs> Oh, I figure we should keep investigating this creepy ass house if we're not going to try to go back to sleep or even attempt that. Yeah. It's There's option. two rooms on the floor we haven't looked at yet. <laughs> hey, we're uh, going to have to confront the ghost at some point. We have to find the ghost. Yeah. I mean, the ghost probably is already looking at us, so. I'm glad you guys yeah. sold yourself on the fact that there's a ghost in the house. <laughs> Demon, I, ghost. I still think it's Kyle. It could be <laughs> Kyle. Vengeful spirit. <laughs> I don't believe Zero at all. <laughs> I have no faith. <laughs> I don't think Kyle's smart enough to do this. <laughs> He's not Kyle. smart enough to be good at it. Yeah. Kyle's the grandson of Lawrence Caldwell. What? Oh, God. I still like my plot <laughs> twist where that raccoon is the monster. The, la the raccoon is Lawrence Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, we no, the raccoon the incantation to... in front of the maybe should have done the incantation in front of the raccoon. Yeah, no, the raccoon is trying to get us out of the house. He didn't do anything. He just grabbed your leg and he's just looking at us. He's not doing anything. So he's trying to get us out of the house. So him being Lawrence Coswell is probably more plausible. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> the the animal scream is probably the raccoon since it was specifically an animal scream. Um, so maybe we should go investigate the scream. Back downstairs, then. Tally ho! So you're going down the stairs, and it's loud creaks as you go down the stairs. And there's two things that happen at the same time. Uh, one of them is you hear the the door that you kind of heard the direction of the raccoon go in. You look down the hallway, because it could be one of a few different rooms, and you notice that the door to the storage room uh, like, right as soon as you start looking at it, it starts to swing open. I try to sneak through to take a look. As you try to get closer, the raccoon runs around your feet. Like, God not, damn it! not scared or anything. <laughs> the thing just kind of, just kind of, like, runs past you. Uh, and it just kind of goes off into a dark corner somewhere. Fucking raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> That but I'm here. still gonna try to. I'm still gonna try to sneak and take a look in what's going in that room. Sure. Uh, roll body sneak. All right. Uh, one. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Sweet. <laughs> so you got at least one. That's one, not six. Yahtzee. <laughs> Yahtzee. <laughs> it's a full house. That's not how that works. <laughs> still don't know how to play that game me either um, <laughs> so you you got at least one success is what you're saying i got one yeah i got one six okay cool so you open the door to the room and you look inside it's a little dark um uh you ask for somebody's flashlight and they hand it to you and you look inside and what you see inside is it, it's this old storage room there's like barrels just full of just junk like um ropes and like you know uh just just crap that the house has needed or had um, lying around and stuff, and in the middle of the room, there's, like, kind of a dark patch in the middle of the wood. Um, laying in the center of it is a dead raccoon. But a raccoon oh, just came out. Hey, guys, there's a dead raccoon. <laughs> okay, the monster's a raccoon. I was partially right. <laughs> so, Not okay with being right. <laughs> so... Can we investigate the markings of the raccoon and see if it's the same markings? <laughs> <laughs> the, like, the, the like the bandit mask and the stripes, or like how it <laughs> died? What do, you want? do we know what the original raccoon looked like? It turns out it was the raccoon's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Not my <laughs> raccoon wife. <laughs> Quick, let's match the scratches on my leg with its paws. But if the if the monster or demon or whatever would imitate the victim, wouldn't they imitate all things? So it wouldn't really matter, right? We just try to figure out if there was only one raccoon in the house. Are you sure yeah, you're I... not the weirdo? <laughs> I'm metagaming, so. 
Yeah, I think even if the raccoon was the monster, it doesn't matter because, or because it's a ghost, right? So we haven't dropped it yet, so I don't think it matters. All right, so you guys are saying it's a ghost? So the yeah. so the raccoon just went around us as a ghost? Yes. Yes. Supernatural has the taught me anything, it's a vengeful spirit, not just a the, ghost. <laughs> yeah, the spirit of Zar. It's the and that place. shovel is made out of cast iron, right? The <laughs> raccoon has unfinished iron. business in this world that it needs to finish. <laughs> so the wait. vengeful spirit, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Zero, were you walking up to the raccoon to check it or anything? <clears throat> yeah, I was going to investigate it. All right, uh, roll mind and Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, as soon as you step on the dark patch, uh, the the floor starts to give way. Um, like as if this floor had molded through, uh, and you fall down uh, into this basically this pit. Uh, everybody else remember that, me. Yeah, you just hear <laughs> and this loud crash. A bunch of dust shoots up into the into the air as it happens. Uh, I don't know if you guys walked into the room at that point or not. No, I'm still mm. towards the stairs. Yeah, I know. Like I mean, Zero kind of went off on his own. So yeah, you guys so I hear? Like, I went off my own. You guys know about the dead raccoon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys hear a loud like crashing sound and zero yell. Yeah, zero went. Let me get a closer ah! look at this raccoon, and we're all like, "Okay." This <laughs> is gross. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll stand watch. <laughs> All right, um, I want to go towards where he fell now. Yeah, let's carefully. That, yeah. So you see a bunch of black smoke kind of filling up the room a little bit as it happens. Um, and it's starting to clear a little bit, but you have to fan your face a little bit as as you're trying to clear it. We cut to zero, who's laying now in a in on some rather hard rocks. Um, <laughs> he's he's kind of like splayed out a little bit because he wasn't expecting to fall through the floor. Uh, but what you do notice immediately in front of your face, Zero, is the dead raccoon. Um, it, it, like, your head almost landed in it, and you have a little bit of its blood on your face. Goddamn um, raccoons! Yeah. <laughs> what you can tell immediately, because the thing is directly in your face now, so no matter of darkness will actually obscure your vision of it, is that, um... There, <laughs> the, the raccoon looks like it has just a big chop in it. Um, and that's what's causing it to bleed. Uh, and it looks rather fresh. Um, hey guys, I got some new information for you. <laughs> Did you wet yourself again? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but as you're uh, kind of trying to regain yourself, you get up and you push your hand onto these rocks that you're sitting on. And you notice that it's a bunch of coal. Um, so it like kind of shifts a little bit. Uh, as you try to steady yourself and get up. But what you also notice is that when you stop moving, something else is shifting rocks in here with you. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's some rope in there, right? <laughs> you mind throwing that down? We have rope? Yeah, I, yeah uh, he the said there storage was rope room in has rope yep. in it. Okay. So, we... Tie the rope off. I want Just, you uh, to roll Tech Tinker. And anybody who wants to help with this can can do that. I will help. Robert, you were a Boy Scout, right? You know how to do <laughs> this. <laughs> As you're sitting in this dark room, there's black smoke in every direction that you see. You do see, when you, when you look around, there is one slice of light that looks like the outside. Uh... Uh, shimmering down into this darkness that you're in, Zero. Is that the door we opened? It could be. I got three successes. Damn. So, because <laughs> uh, you're building, uh, technically, um, you can choose the thing is more durable, the thing can do more, or the thing is more discreet. One of those is really the only thing that matters. Uh... Oh, only one matters? Damn I mean, Dave. you don't need it to be discreet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw this rope down so you can't find it. I don't think it really needs to do more than its yeah, intended purpose. Yeah, I was gonna either. say durable because, like, at first I was like, you know what? There was a loud crash and there's something moving down there. Nobody's gonna care. But then you went and said that and made me second guess myself. How dare you, Dave? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're making it more durable then? Yeah, let's make it more durable. All right, how many successes did you get? 
three. Three, nice. So the thing has a Robert, plus two to it. Robert, did you get any? It. it has what? It has, uh, basically, when you go to use it, it's going to have plus two, because it's more durable. Ooh, plus um, two durability. So, uh, uh, zero, uh, so you guys said you tied off the rope somewhere in the storage room and you're lowering it down? Yeah. So, Zero, uh, before they can lower it down, what are you doing? Uh, <clears throat> at the moment, I am lighting some fireworks to try to give some extra light to see what's going on. This is a really bad idea. <laughs> fireworks? <laughs> Don't you have a flashlight? I, I, am, I am taking out uh, my little the, the anti-curse doll my little sister made for me. <laughs> And I'm stroking um, it. So you have the, asking, no, no, you can you still have light the fireworks light. if you want. What do you? So what do you want to do? Uh, you said it's a really bad idea. It's gonna be funny. I won't kill you. <laughs> all right, all right. I like, I like, I light the fireworks, but like only when the rope has come down to me. Okay. So what kind of fire is it? Like a sparkler? You think or? Yeah, they're like for I can't get that baby. That's what you're trying. <laughs> you're trying to light, right? You're not trying to throw yeah, yeah, something yeah. to explode. Like those little popper sparkler kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, so you're looking around the room uh, and hopefully scare whatever is there in case it's another fucking raccoon. <laughs> yeah. Every single time you look around, you see like something just out of your vision, like seemingly slink away, and then when you direct onto it, it's like nothing was there. And every so often you get a glimpse of something. It looks like maybe a foot. Sometimes it looks like maybe an arm moving or something. But it's, it's just hard to tell raccoons. what's going down here. It's a family Guys, pull me up, pull me up, pull me up, pull me up. I did Alrighty. not pass Jim. I want all of you to roll heart lead. And then, Ash, you get plus two to this. So you get two extra dice. Good, because I only get one for this. Can't even tell the last time I rolled a success. <laughs> One success. You got it? Did Gene help zero. out? Zero. I oh tried, but I got zero. I pulled her up and I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I strained my I wrist. read books, damn it. <laughs> reading hand. The reading hand. <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, you, you pull the rope and you're pulling him up and you're pulling him up. Uh, Zero, you, like, use your feet to kind of try and help push yourself up. You, like, kick onto any debris that's kind of hanging down from the hole as you do. And re right before you get your head out of the hole, what you see come through the darkness and look you dead in the face is a donkey head. And then you're pulled up and the hole collapses in on itself. And there's no more hole anymore. It's just a bunch of debris now. Did you leave the firework in the coal? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. You see smoke, but it ends up going out because it's all wet. <laughs> I hope so, otherwise we're screwed. Yeah, otherwise you just blew up the house. <laughs> so, I mean, so, guys, I'm a little freaked out. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, prepare yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Steal yourselves. Uh... So, you remember that donkey <laughs> head that was uh, upstairs last? Oh, yeah, it's no wow. longer upstairs. <laughs> uh, That's cool. This guy has some weird, whoever this thing is or whatever, uh, they really enjoy animals' cruelty and shit. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Should we try to leave? I'm okay with a B, guys. I'm okay with a C. Let's just Wait, you go. weren't filming any of that? <laughs> I was trying to haul your butt up. <laughs> I'm so sorry I don't have a third that? arm. <laughs> Speaking of which, the camera's lying on the floor right now because you put it down to, to do that. Okay, Is it so... still raining super bad? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I, uh, I guess I pick up the camera and I'll just hold on to it for now. Okay. So my vote is to go regardless of rain. Yeah, we should try doing that because this place is horrible. <laughs> um, uh, maybe we can try sleeping in the shed. Maybe it won't be haunted. And then Not in the remember, morning we can yeah. we can officially solve this, <laughs> or at least bring some grown ups, some big people. The big people. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if by solve it, you mean leave and never think about this ever again. 
I mean, we found a skeleton. Maybe we should like bring the skull of the skeleton. I'm not hey. going back prove, upstairs. To prove our claims. I'm not going to touch a skull, thank you very much. I'm not touching anything that could be cursed. Yeah. Nothing go- cursed now? <laughs> Nothing ghosts love more than disturbed bones. <laughs> oh, they love that. They fucking love it. And this was bu- this was built on a Native American burial ground, right? <laughs> Maybe all the families to. deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point. You never ask. Stop and ask yourself: Did the people who were murdered were they dicks? <laughs> They're just dicks. <laughs> oh, ooh, guys, I forgot to tell you an important piece of information. The raccoon was hacked the fuck up. <laughs> also, uh, I'm going to take some of this holy water and try to clean off the blood. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot you kind of covered in that. Unclean, unclean. I'm surprised none of you noticed. <laughs> I forgot, honestly. And uh, There's a lot know. of shit going on right now. Oh, oh what's, the, what's going on when you your face, Zero? <laughs> Is Zero being covered in blood just seems part for the course at this point. Yeah, it's it's like when uh, <laughs> yeah, did you guys hear a lot the of Pentagon, bodily fluids? The Pentagon released footage of UFOs, and it's like the most unnoteworthy thing in yeah. 2020 so far. It looks like Darth <laughs> Vader's yeah. ship. Yeah, that's basically what Zero covered in a little bit of blood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I just you know, I assumed it's his blood because he did fall on his face. True. So. Wait, I fell on my face? I thought it fell on my butt. You don't <laughs> were face down. And the, rac- and the raccoon know. was on my face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to the shed. Is that the uh, consensus here? I I, I want to go outside, period. So I'm j- I just want to sleep somewhere that's not haunted house. Okay, I, I agree. But since <laughs> it's going to be rainy and cold, we should stop by the, the, the cloak room and get some of those jackets to keep us warm. It's a good idea. Right. The cloak right. room was close to the front door, right? Yep. Yeah, it was. It yep. was right there. Right. Which so you near the library, which is the how we got room. in. Uh, and you open up the door to the cloak room, and you're in the south guest bedroom on the second floor. <sighs> God damn it! <laughs> Not cool, Dave. Here. <laughs> Not cool, Dave. <laughs> Well, is, weird the, is, is the door in the fireplace open and is the raccoon standing in it? Because you you somehow got into this room through a, where there isn't a door, so you can still see the door. It's like you came in through a wall somehow. Uh, when you turn around, the door isn't there anymore. Um, and something else is happening. There's a fireplace. The fire is going in the fireplace, and there's a rocking chair. Just kind of. Why? Really not cool, Dave. <laughs> there wasn't a rocking chair earlier. There earlier was there? No, no. Well, of course not. Did we go back in time? Please don't tell me we went back in time. If anyone wants to roll mind comprehend, yeah, I'll do. It. <laughs> I should not do it. Helper. I was like, how about we all try to figure out what the hell's going on? All right, sure. Still no successes, I swear. One one success. One success. Alrighty. I'm just going to read this part from this book uh, that you guys read earlier. Uh, Martha Franklin dies in her sleep in 1982 of natural causes. Henry lives on for another seven months before also passing away in his favorite chair by the fireplace on the second floor. We went back in time. There's nobody in the chair. It's a ghost. But it read the thing, read the thing. Read the thing. Read the I still oh, yeah. say it's Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, and Kyle set up some here. sort of teleportation room. In the <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. How are we stuck through all this shit? <laughs> and he showed up 17 times. <laughs> what was the name of the old man dead in his chair again? Uh, Henry Franklin. Henry Franklin. Um, so I'll say the incantation first. Uh, immediately the fireplace goes out and the chair stops. Henry Franklin, if you help us, maybe we can help you. Martha, is that you? We are children. We're small um, people. Please take pity on us, sir. <laughs> we are trapped are and we want to go home. Dead. <laughs> say that. Say that again and you hear it. <laughs> 
I said the children are already dead. Uh, well, that blows. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Come on down for supper, Martha. Oh boy. Martha would want you to help these children, Henry Franklin. There are no responses. So we're just okay with talking to this voice, by the way. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> totally cool. With it. I don't plan to uncheck I mean, scared off my. I the occult stuff, but you guys seem pretty fucking chill. My my character is going to be scared for the rest of the game. <laughs> That's fair. My character's gonna be scared for the rest of my life. <laughs> There's no Tang, over this. you guys don't, if you guys had Tang in your rooms, you guys would be fine. <laughs> Believe in the Tang. <laughs> tang, the my guy's gonna things. start that first ever it's ghost adventure. Full of Tang. <laughs> All right, guys. So. There's a spirit. Is it? Wait, hold on. <laughs> and it wants us to go downstairs for dinner. Frank, Frankie boy, do you know how we could stop this? Uh, it doesn't respond. I hope we're not dinner. Frank, Frankie boy, if you're still here, na 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 boo boo. <laughs> There's no, as much as I want to make a joke that there is a response, there is no response. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm thoroughly confused. <laughs> All right, we should proceed downstairs to supper. It's the only way we're going to get any answers. Zero, you want answers, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to go to the shed? Maybe we could just pop down that... Do we still have the rope? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't. I, mean, I don't maybe think we it'll could... work anymore since it's getting all teleport now. So, I don't think we need to go into the cloak room. I think we could probably just try to go. I don't... I, I yeah. agree with Robert that we should try to do separate because I think the ghost is happiness in the house now yeah okay sure maybe i can give him a granola bar <laughs> hey, a snickers because oh you're God. not you when you're hungry <laughs> <laughs> you're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> all righty so you guys are going down to the dining room on the first floor oh god sure maybe the raccoons for dinner i don't know i hope it's not us at least <laughs> Alrighty, so you open got the hot door. Sauce for it. <laughs> so good. Frank's red hot. I put that beat on everything. So you uh, you get to the door to the dining room. Do we notice anything? Uh, you notice what kind of looks like a faint light coming from underneath the door, and a little bit of a fog. Hey, um, I guess we proceed. I think we should investigate the fog. <laughs> Want to take a sample of the fog and test it? <laughs> I think I picked up a fire poker when we were in the guest room. I don't think it's going to be useful, but it makes me feel better to hold it. That's fine. It's probably you made of iron. You say you get rid of right? your, uh, uh, you're scared for a moment just because that makes you a little bit more brave. Even though okay. you don't know how well it will do against possibly ghosts, but uh, it's, it's still probably helps. made of iron. It, it feels nice to hold. <laughs> I decide to fill up my super sucker this time with gack. <laughs> the gack that I brought. Oh, God. <laughs> so maybe I can slow it down. If there's something there, maybe I can slow it down. You would it even come out of the super soaker? Wouldn't it just clog it up? Oh, I, I said originally that I uh, super. I, I tinkered with it at the beginning. Okay, so it, it defies It's an physics, extra powerful super soaker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know if it's going to fucking work. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work, but I, I just modify it. It's probably just going to clock his gun. He doesn't fucking know. <laughs> I mean, there is a compressed Just because he says it's going to happen doesn't mean it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, okay, so you guys open the door to the, um, the dining room, and what you see when you're inside... Uh, you guys didn't go in this room before, but there's no way it looked like this when you walked in. 
Um, it, it looks like it's brand new. Like there's a there's a nice fire going in the fireplace in the corner. Um, there's a long table with many chairs, and there's uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, plates set with uh, food at every single chair. Um, and then uh, at the very end of the table, there's a man sitting at the uh, at the end of the table. And on the uh, table, there are also a bunch of those like uh, what's it called? Plates with the the dinner hider. <laughs> like a serving platter? Yeah, yeah, and they have that thing that kind of hides the dome. The, the dome that goes yeah, over the it. Little yeah, the little dome. <laughs> and there's like four of those sitting on the uh, the table. Oh, no fancy rich people things. And he, he I know sits there's there. a guy in here. There's a guy, yeah, like, and it's an old I know man. there's a guy in here, but like we should add to the weird tally how many fireplaces? <laughs> <laughs> it's a manse. It's not quite a house. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it like a baby manch. Um but uh uh so this man is sitting at the end of the table and he's he's extremely still. Like he doesn't look like he's breathing and he doesn't look like he's sitting in a very natural state. It's almost like he's sitting there with rigor mortis. Uh Ash, could you start recording? <laughs> is he is he dressed like old Tybee? Yeah, well he he's dressed like he's from the eighties. Uh, okay. Yeah. So he's wearing a wham t-shirt. 1980s. <laughs> so it's probably Henry Franklin. Yes. Hey, Mr. Franklin, we're just trying to leave your house. Can you let us leave? He he, he kind of snaps really quick as he looks at you and he's like, Martha, I missed you. Sit down, please. <laughs> Have some supper. Oh, I don't like that. Nope. I do not like that. Who's wait, not wait, wait, scared wait. or upset right now? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Guess what what you are you are. serving? <laughs> it's it's your favorite. Human heads. Um, your I don't think we ash, should right? eat the food. But you huh? are recording this, Ash, right? I can't be. I take my camera out very slowly. And I'm like, ah, guys, I don't think we should eat the as you pick up the camera, you notice, uh, in the view of the camera, uh, the room looks completely empty. Um, it looks like it's run down, like how you would expect this room to look. Um, the only difference, uh, that stands out immediately is instead of Henry Franklin sitting at the end of the table, uh, sitting at the four seats along the side are four headless children. And they all have uh, eating utensils in their hands, and they're going like this, like they want to eat. Oh so my since God. since I can still only see Henry Franklin, I'd say to Ash, Ash, make sure you get him in focus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say zero. Hey, zero, please stay with the group. <laughs> so, so what's the incantation? It... So how's it looking, Ash? <laughs> You're the only one who can look. <laughs> Why don't you come over here and take a look and let me know what you think? Robert, I think you know the incantation. I think you can say it because I've said it a bunch of times. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to say the incantation at least five times. <laughs> well, I, I look I look into the camera's um, lens. Yes, yeah, viewfinder. Know, like, viewfinder, thank you. And I see the other children and I was like, and I go like, huh. Hey, Robert, you should take a look. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as you're looking at the camera and you go, huh, you say the incantation, and immediately both of you find your, so like what you guys see in real life and what you're seeing in the thing, every single body in the in the shot just stands up, almost like there wasn't a chair next to him. And then they all just kind of freak out and zip out, like they merge with the walls behind them. You, but what you see when you're not looking through the viewfinders is all the chairs that those headless kids were in shoot back against the wall and break. So from one viewpoint, like what you guys see in real life, you see this creepy old man like shoot up. He kind of like freaks out and then shoots backwards and then all the chairs shoot against the wall. What uh, Zero sees the viewfinder is the kids do the same thing, and then they shoot back against the wall. And then a chair that's at the end of the table just shoots back. Well, guys, I think we got the A. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, but, so after saying the incantation, like, 
he's just he he's just standing there now. No, there's nothing in the room anymore. Okay, oh, so I know you guys didn't see it, but there was also four headless children sitting in the other chairs. Down the leave. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I let's, def, let's go. Yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's go to, to the library to leave. Let's also, leave. just to let you know, there was no food. Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those no, plates no. are still there. I was like, there was food. It was definitely us. We should leave. <laughs> hey, I was right. <laughs> wait, wait, there's plates there? And the he said there, there was food. Have you guys seen Hook? I've seen Pan <laughs> Labyrinth. <laughs> You haven't seen Pan's okay, Labyrinth we're going, come out right? for another 20 years. That was a, that was a 1992 <laughs> film. <That's Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we're we're heading out of the out of the dining room. So you're in where are you heading to? The the library, library. Because that's where we came through, right? You open the door to the library and you see a man standing there holding a book. And he he looks at the book and he puts it up on the shelf. And then he turns to you and he says, "I've been expecting you." Which and, one of us? Uh, he just kind of, he, he, he genuinely looks to all of you. And uh, you recognize him because you've seen photos of him in books you've read. This is Lawrence Coswell. Well, um, he can help us get out of here, right? <laughs> so, hey, I betrayed you in a film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I was really hoping Everett Breckenridge would portray me in a film. <laughs> but I guess you will do. <laughs> Bit young. But... I've been expecting someone to come to this house and one day find the journal that I left in the fireplace. Why did you hide it there? Because I hid it <laughs> thinking that if I hid it with Zar, and as long as nobody opened that room, he would have stayed in there. But I knew that that was only a temporary fix to a larger problem. How do we trap him again, Mr. Coswell? What you will have to do is that you have to go to the basement, bring, bring, if you can find salt, bring salt with you. Speak the incantation there. Then maybe you can stop him, but he will be powerful, so be warned. Only you can save the souls that have been left in this house. And he says that, and he actually starts to f to fade out slowly, but he's not completely gone yet. Thanks, Smokey the Bear. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I try. I try to gack him. <laughs> it just Get goes through. <laughs> what does end up happening before he can fully disappear, though, is from the ceiling comes this strange looking creature it like drops down and then it stands up slowly and what it looks like is a gangly like corpse of a man um and it has like b a tattered clothes on it that kind of barely loosely hang off of it it looks like it's covered in rags and the thing is holding a fire axe and on its head instead of a normal human head it looks like it's that trophy of butters the donkey <sighs> And, it's, and it raises its arm that's longer than a normal human arm. And it slashes through Lawrence Coswell's ghost. Cutting his ghost in half and you see him scream before burning alive. But now there's this giant horrifying looking thing. Kind of just standing at the end of the room. And it goes to lift its fire axe again. So, uh, Tales of the Loop has this thing. <laughs> um, so it's called I a, make a wincing. I make a wincing noise in pain. Because I try to pee, but unfortunately I'm dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so dehydrated. <laughs> so I uh, peed too much. What basically what it is? I believe it's called making a plan. It's yeah, I know it sounds simple, but it's a gameplay mechanic where basically you guys all tell me what you're going to do, then you roll to see if it happens, and I give you dice. Like you're all rolling dice as a pool together to see how well you succeed in the thing you're doing. Um, so basically, we have time, to be. What, what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, one at a time, tell me what you plan to do. You're in this room. This thing is raising its axe into the air. Um, and uh, what do you plan on doing right now in this instant? And then all of that will fire at the exact same time. Um, and that's why we're rolling to see if all of it goes off without a hitch. 
So okay, you, so you have as much time to talk about this as you want because it's almost like time froze in your planning right now. But like the, we're, we're going to plan out what's going to happen and then you're going to roll to see if it goes off. Okay, so Coswell said we have to be in the basement. It's correct? Salt. Yeah. We're salt. So where's the salt again? Which guest room was it in? Um... You know there was salt upstairs in the master bedroom. And by basement, just let me clarify, because uh, uh, if you look at the main thing, you look at the kitchen, and there's a staircase that goes down. He specifically means that, that one. Because remember, the only other basement you guys probably know about is the caved-in thing that, that Zero fell through. That's not so what he's talking about. So there's no salt in the kitchen? <laughs> there might be. You don't know. The, like I said, the only place you know there is salt is in the master bedroom. You never went into kitchen, so you have no idea. Does uh, detergent count as salt? <laughs> you can ask the ghost of Butters the Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, so... While swinging his axe at you, is detergent salt? <laughs> Would detergent hurt? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, so, uh, my vote would be that we run to the master bedroom. So, basically, like, we, all of us run, and I shout, we, sh we need to go to the master bedroom to get the salt. I think I should use my smoke bomb that I have had with me and use it and to hopefully distract or make it obscure, like, give us a chance to escape and have it, his vision be obscured. Mm. I don't know if that works on ghosts, but <laughs> can't hurt. It, it, I mean, it's it's a good idea. Like, you don't know if it'll work, but it's it's a good idea based on what you have available to you, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to run for the salt, too, in the master bedroom. The master bedroom, all right. I'm going to say the incantation while running out the door towards the master bedroom. <laughs> all righty. So well, I think, I think, though... Okay, so my worry is, if he follows all of us to the master bedroom, then... We're all going to be in the same spot, and it's going to be, how are we going to get around him? You can figure Because we're going to corner ourselves. <laughs> I think one of us has to distract him. Oh, damn. Gonna be I, I think it should be me. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the man with all the bag, the bag full of tricks and fireworks yeah. and super soakers full of holy water sounds like a good, good candidate yeah. for that. Just because I Tracking. love the Goonies and I love... Data or whatever. What was his name in the Goonies? The guy with all the gadgets? Oh, I can't remember. God, I thought it was Data or not Data, but sorry. <laughs> That's Star Trek. Just That's because Star I'm that kid. I think fine. you're the most distracting, Zero. All right, fine. I got the smoke bombs. Alrighty, so uh, with that said, it sounds like three of you are going to run up to the master bedroom, Zero is going to distract. So what I'm I want go to go around roll... in the hall. I'm just going to go through the hallways around and around until they meet back up with me. Makes sense. So uh, <laughs> what I want each of you to roll is I want um, everyone to roll three dice, but I want Mozzie to roll four dice. And actually, I want Ash. You get one more dice too because you um, at one point you had asked information about this, and so you get an extra dice for it. I want to say actually, Gene, you get one more dice too. Okay. Oh, please. Oh, finally, one so success. So then, whatever the combined success of what all of you get is, is how well this goes off. Well, thank you for the extra dice. I got two successes. Two, so that's three total? One. Four total? Zero successes. So we got four successes. So here's what happens. Um, the three of you immediately, like, stumble back. Zero says, get out of here! I'll take care of this! And you guys all run. Uh, Zero pulls out a, a smoke bomb and throws it down. Uh, and the, the thing, as it's raising its its arm, uh, it, the smoke it obscures its vision, so it swings the axe. And uh, it, it's, it, like, basically gives Zero a little bit of a haircut, because, like, that's how close it gets. But then it gets its axe lodged in one of the bookshelves to the left. Um, and, uh, so you guys are running up the stairs. I changed my mind! <laughs> <laughs> so Zero's kind of running around the house. Uh, you can see him on the first floor just kind of diving from room to room. He'll get into a room, he'll throw some fireworks down, the thing will get... I'm spraying some gack behind me to try to slip it yeah. up. <laughs> it's like really co it's almost like a Scooby-Doo chase. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, but, but then, as you guys get to the top of the stairs, there's two little girls standing at the top of the stairs. No. Um, 
And uh, uh, I don't want to play. Basically, what they what's do. What's happening, guys? <laughs> what they do is they kind of giggle, and their eyes are just completely white. And they giggle at you, and then they pick up each other's heads and swap them. And put them back. But oh, you guys are God. in so much of a hurry and, and freaked out by everything that's going on that you just book right past them. Like, you even try to, like, push them, but they're ethereal. You just go right through them. Um, so they kind of, like, smoke for a second as you run through them. Are and they then... confused after <laughs> we run through them? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but uh, one of you turns around to see as uh, you're going through them, and both of their heads have turned completely around, but their bodies are still facing towards the staircase. And I hope you make we confuse it... them. I, <laughs> I really hope we did. I hope they're confused. You make it into the um, uh, into the uh, bedroom, the master bedroom. Um, and what you see in this room is it looks like there's a strange... Uh, remember how I said that there were shotgun shells lined up in front of the fireplace and that they, there was a guy replacing, like, he was doing something with the, the thing? You see what looks like a special forces agent sitting in front of the fireplace and he's like, his fingers are bleeding and he's trying to unscrew these shotgun shells when all of a sudden some unseen thing pulls him into the fireplace and down through the shaft. And you see blood spray out of the shaft forming what was that wet spot in front of the fireplace. Um, that was almost like a strange vision of the past, so that guy wasn't actually there. Um, but, and now you're in this room, uh, the room seems to be completely empty, um, and yeah. So, way, that was part one of that plan. By the way, when I was, when I run around, it occurs to me to put on my cloak, or, my, sorry, my, uh, satin cape that I've had, <laughs> and, you know, just duck into the kitchen real quick and see if there's salt. <laughs> <laughs> That's three to good. dexterity. <laughs> well, we'll actually go down to Mozzie really quick, because I, I narrated what you guys were doing for a little bit. So, Mozzie, you get into the kitchen. Uh, what you find in the kitchen is there's this old woman, and she's cutting up something at the, uh, at the, the table in her... She t turns her head around. She's like, don't worry, Henry. I'm making your dish. It'll be ready soon. And the, the kitchen actually feels pretty warm and nice and inviting. Sure. Make sure to add extra salt, honey. <laughs> you got it. And uh, just because that was great, you get an extra dice to use later if you want it. So write that okay. down. Uh, she pulls out what looks like uh, there was like a... Uh, you, sh you see her like kind of fight one of the cabinets for a second. And then she, like, rips it off of the handle, like, the door off the handle. And there's, like, a bunch of little canisters of things in there. And she pulls out one. And she opens it and pulls a little spoon out and dumps salt on whatever she was cooking. Then the room, the lights dim. And it gets completely dark. And you're back in the, the present, it seems. But the salt is sitting on the table uh, for you. Cool. Um, so I take note of that. And I quickly run back out to, to try to keep make sure I keep distracting the guy. Because okay. we have to go through the kitchen, right? The... Yeah, eventually, yeah. Okay. So so you're still on distract mode. So we're back yeah, upstairs. Yeah, I just quickly snuck in to, to pop my head in to see if there was anything in there. Okay, cool. So we're, we, we're back up to the master bedroom with you guys. I All right, we have the salt. Off, take my backpack off, and I'm trying to get a bunch of salt into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but cool. I remember there's a canister that I found under the bed, right? There is. Okay, can I flash my, uh, can I show, uh, shine my flashlight under the bed? You can. You see a, a silver canister. Hey, it's I like a go, big like yeah. tub, and it says salt on it. Can I reach it, or is it too far? Yeah, you can reach it. Okay, I go to grab it. Something grabs your wrist. I fucking knew it. <laughs> and then as as uh, you, it's grabbed your wrist, it starts to stand up, and you see the master bed kind of lift off of its back as it does, and it's the donkey creature thing again. Um, and it, 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 it's, it's still got your wrist in one hand and it's holding its axe above its head as it like starts to raise up into the air. So everybody uh, who's in the okay. bedroom, form a plan right now. <laughs> okay, so yep. I'm going to yell for Robert to come out with the shovel. No, you should make a, that's going to be my plan anyway. You should okay. <laughs> well, if she's yelling up. at you for the shovel, she'll give you another dice for it. Oh, okay. Then that I'm would definitely be my plan. In the middle of the fight, I toss you a dice. So you can roll for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw this dice at it. Hopefully it's made of magic. Um, I yelled at incantation, and I'm also going to swing with my fire poker. Oh, nice. All right. So uh, let's have it. So uh, Mike, 
you roll body force, but then you get two extra dice because you're using an item, and you also get an extra dice because uh, uh, Alicia gave it to you. Um, Gene, you get body force, but give yourself two extra dice because you're using the incantation, which is something you learned earlier, and you're also using an item. Um, and then Alicia, why don't you roll, um, body move, just to see if you can get away. As they're all rolling that zero, you turn around, you, you lit another firework, you turn around to try and distract it, and you notice the thing is gone. <laughs> hey, guys! <laughs> oh! <laughs> all right, so what'd you guys get? Two successes. I did not succeed. You got two zero. successes? I got one success. So that's three successes altogether? All right, so what you managed to do is... Uh, you, um, uh, Gene, as you're running towards it, you slip on some of the blood and you accidentally fall down. So you, you, uh, unfortunately don't get close enough, but Robert takes his, his shovel and he hits the thing over the head and the donkey th it kind of gets like the donkey head trophy thing that's on this thing's body kind of gets like smashed a bit. So this like taxidermy head of this donkey just kind of gets destroyed a little bit revealing some of the face underneath and it looks a little bit like the skeleton that you saw earlier um, but its teeth are a little bit longer than it used to be and there's an eyeball in the socket that's like pitch red um, and as you hit it that happens but uh, uh, the axe kind of comes down and clips ash in the leg a little bit um, so give yourself injured, but it doesn't, like, take you out of commission, it just hurts you a little bit. Because you guys didn't succeed super great at this plan, but, like, you still did enough that you got out of it. So, uh, that leaves this thing, like, it's, it's kind of dazed because you smashed half of its, its mask thing that it was wearing. And it's, like, trying to kind of regain its composure. Okay. Grab the salt and run. Wait, did it drop me, though? Yeah, it dropped you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I, I quickly grabbed the salt, and I think we all should run out of the room. And I've run by this time back into the kitchen. Yeah. As you guys run out of the master bedroom, you just hear it yell, Listen to the axe, honey! It demands this! <laughs> and then uh, the, uh, as you shut the door behind you to get out of that room, the axe just, like, comes through the door right next to your face. Um, and then you see it pull it away. Uh, and then you all kind of meet back up in the main room. Um, so, uh, you're Wait, all back in the main room or the kitchen? Uh, I want to say you're in the main hall on the first floor right now, uh, just because you all kind of, that's a good spot to meet back up, um, because they were on the second floor, so they had to come back down, and then you were running around the house, so you lost it somewhere, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so you're all in the main room on the, on the first floor. Let's get another plan going. Right. Uh, we should go. We should get into the fucking thing and do it. Yeah, we're supposed to go to the basement, right? Also, guys, I hate to ruin this for you, but there was salt in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and plenty of it. And there was this really nice lady. I'm just going to let you know. So much of it. That's just, it's so just good. absolutely filled first, with it. First ghost, first ghost I met here who was super nice. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, that's great. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can write all this about it later. All right, so we're, we need to go to the basement, right? Yeah. Right, so we gotta All run right. through the kitchen, and then Maybe go. Yeah. Should we go two separate directions in case the ghost comes back? Is there only one entrance to the kitchen? Uh, <laughs> to the kitchen, I think there's two. To the basement, yeah, there's two. You can go technically, uh, if uh, either side through the dining uh, around the dining room. You can even go through the dining room if you wanted to. I no, vote I don't think for we should go not. back in there. <laughs> yeah, I vote for not. I just say we book it. Uh, let's right. just go through the... Yeah, also, let's just I'm really tired. I've been running around for a while. <laughs> <Yeah. time. laughs> uh, everybody roll body move. You had three successes between all of you? Yeah. We're doing great. You guys body are doing really move. great. <laughs> We're going to die. <laughs> You're going to be dead kids in a house full of dead kids. <laughs> We're going to turn uh, into the kids eating monsters. No successes. <laughs> no successes. All right. So what ends up happening is you guys are, you guys reconvene, you almost bump into each other, um, and you're all like out of breath because you're running, and you're like, uh, uh, Zero mentions that there's salt in the kitchen, you guys hold up a thing full of salt, <laughs> um, and then uh, you talk about how you have to get to the basement, uh, but right as you do, in between all of you, this thing comes out of the floor, 
and it just kind of starts to slowly stand up. So that moves you into action. So you all you all kind of run in different directions to get to the kitchen, and you get to the kitchen, and you notice that the door to the basement is locked. Um, so uh, that gets uh, you there. Okay. What? Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish it. Oh no, I, that's it. Uh, you, you guys. I was gonna say, let's stand, let's stand where the door is, but like, put a ring of salt around us while we try to figure out what the fuck to do. <laughs> Wait, you idea. said there's salt in the kitchen. Where, where in the kitchen is it? We're well, right now we're in the kitchen, correct? Yeah. And we're in front of the door, so yes. it's so we grab it. It's right where we are. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you let's have just two grab canisters. It anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Full of salt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's the plan right here? Wait, is there more salt that I can grab too? We just all have salt. Uh, those two giant canisters are probably enough. Okay. Bigger than us because we're little people. They're little. Yeah, <laughs> you're tiny. <laughs> Imagine um, like uh, giant those big milk gallons. Like you got two of those full of salt, essentially. Oh, so they're kosher salt because you know. Timely and rock. So just salt. putting this out here, putting it out there. But like, if we put salt in the water and put it into my super soaker, yeah. will it still be holy water though? Or just so, salty water. So salty, salty holy, holy water. water. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a ghost. ghost. It's like it's Jesus' tears. <laughs> Can I attempt to uh, unlock the door? Not ready. Oh, so how do you want to do that? Firecracker? Uh, <laughs> I'm not opposed to that idea. But doesn't doesn't Gene still have a key, though, that didn't work anywhere else? No, it no, worked on the upstairs. latch in the fireplace. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, wait. So this way, I was joking about the holy salt water thing. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the plan thing. So uh, you want to try opening the door somehow. Uh, and and, then and, and I everybody... think one of us should put a line of salt in front of us to make sure that we have some, we buy us some time. Okay. Um, and then uh, what do you two want to do? So, so uh, Zero is saying that we should put salt uh, so I think we should put salt at uh, the doors that we came through, uh, okay. into the kitchen for one. Okay. And then Jean, did you want to do that for the other door or something? Um, I don't have salt, so maybe. Um, how sturdy does the handle or the door hinges look? Because I saw my fire poker. Oh, uh, they look like they could be breakable if you come at it hard enough. Um. I just start whacking it. You just okay, go so, it. so so I the so handle. just to be clear. Sorry, just to be clear, I gave Robert the uh, the firecracker, and he's gonna try to do that himself. Okay, yeah, sounds good. So basically, yep. okay. uh, what would well uh, everybody roll things? So let's see. And so uh, me and Jean, uh, sorry, so me and Ash are putting salt around. I want Ash and uh, Zero to both roll one dice and just tell me what the result is. I'm gonna roll it on my laptop. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> it was a one. <laughs> I was doing so well. What'd you get? I got a one. Okay, <laughs> so uh, what ends up happening is both of you, fortunately, do have salt in your containers. Um, so Ooh. that's fine. See, now, if one of you got, like, more than three, I was going to say one of those was full of fingers, but here oh. we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> You didn't know what the old woman pulled out. You just assumed. Come on. It's <laughs> amateur hour over here. She seemed so nice. She, seems, she was a ghost. <laughs> Ghosts can be cool. You That's know, true. Lawrence can, was pretty yeah. cool. Um, but Jasper like, was nice. So uh, that being said, now that you guys have. So I want um, I want Jean and uh, Robert to roll body force, but give yourself... Uh, plus two each because you're both using uh, some weapons that you got and stuff. Um, I want uh, uh, the other two, Ash and Zero, to roll body move. Uh, okay. Give yourself plus one each as well because you're using a salt container. Oh yeah, I had a plus one saved. <laughs> and you have that too if you want to use it. You I'm can save it later. For, so I can roll now. six dice? Mm -hmm. Alright, no one success. success. You got one success? All right. I think we each got one success. Oh, gee. I got one oh, success. I don't, you're on, I, oh, there we go. I got none. Zero. You got no successes? All right. So me and Robert were the only two who got successes. All right. I got, I got three. Three oh, successes. You got three. All right. And you rolled body move, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the three, because you needed only one success, you have the ability to buy two effects and you could buy the same one twice if you want. Give a success to another kid, impress someone, or no one notices you. 
It, does no one also include the the demon ghost thing? In yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, who who failed the rolls? Just just Jean. Okay, I give one to Jean. Okay, cool. It's good. <laughs> Because I was going to blow her <laughs> fingers off, probably. Hey, well, <laughs> I'm really all about the fingers the right now. <laughs> Rub some salt in it, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be fine. Alrighty, so here's what happens. Um, basically, uh, Robert puts a, a like just a firecracker in the lock, because it's one of those old-timey key locks. He just shoves it right in the hole for that, and then Gene just kind of smashes it, and the lock just explodes off of it. Um, and it shoots across the room, but luckily it doesn't hurt anybody because you guys had enough successes. Um, and you guys, uh, block the doors with some salt, uh, and you see the creature, like, y you're pouring salt on the ground and the doorway is open in front of you, and as you look up, the thing is just standing in the doorway looking at you. And it goes to, like, reach you, but as it tries to cross the threshold, uh, it burns a little bit and it goes, <laughs> And you hear it make, like, a donkey noise as it does it, like a, I told you, no braying! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> um, and then, uh, but yeah, so you uh, now the door to the basement is open and you guys are safe for a sec, at least. Uh, it, as it, like, fizzes a little bit because it, it feels the barrier that you've kind of made. Uh, you see it kind of dip through the floor and kind of sink downwards. Ooh. Except we're going, he's going down there. To he's the going down there. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I think he's going to the basement. Well, we've got to go down there, so we don't really have a choice. All right. We 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 we've got salt, we've got weapons, and we've I, got our incantation. I think that salt holy water is actually not a bad idea. Yeah, you I was just going to say that. Holy water? <laughs> Why don't we try don't need doing much that salt again? anyway to do it, so. Alrighty. So I pour a little bit of salt into the holy water. That's a good idea. In my so super you, soaker. You all and make I'm your gonna way pump into it the basement? I'm going to pump it to prime it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's head down there. Alrighty, so you get in the basement, and there's a creaky wooden staircase, and when you reach the bottom, you notice it's covered in dirt. Um, like, this basement is unfinished. It's just like a dirt area there's a wood door at the far end of it which you can only assume like based on your knowledge of kind of where the rooms are in the house that that leads to the coal cellar um where you've been twice now <laughs> um, and, uh and uh this room is like wet uh and like dirty when you every time you step your feet kind of sink into the mud a little bit um, but yeah, you're now in this empty room. There, there's water dripping from the ceiling. They have like a couple, um, f things that were long rotted hanging on, on, uh, sticks in the basement. It's like, they used to kind of use it as a natural cooler. Um, but now the stuff that was left here is just long rotted. Um, so yeah, now you're in a creepy basement that's really dark. Hey guys. Old hooks with me. I don't mean them. to creep you guys out, but I don't know what happened to the raccoon. <laughs> 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 oh, that's in the coal cellar. So it, it would technically, if it were, if it's still there for whatever okay. reason, okay. It's, no, you know what? Notice you he step said two feet. It's still there. And you step two feet, and its carcass just drops in front of you. <laughs> uh. God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> uh, I have my flashlight still, so I turn it on and start waving it. See if there's any ghosts down here. Uh, there doesn't I, I appear ask. to be. I asked Ash to please turn on the camera and look through it because we did see ghosts through that last time. Yeah, I was just about to say something about the camera. So I hold the camera in one hand and I hold the salt in another if it's possible because it's, uh, I, you can know. Can I grab I mean, the like salt this? from her? You so, have a two handed weapon. What are you going to do? I <laughs> not have the two handed weapon. The salt's more powerful than a, uh, than a shovel right now. I mean, you, <laughs> you, crushed, you crushed his face and knocked him out or, a little bit. True. All right. I need something. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> Camera doesn't do anything for me. It just sees things. Uh, so it gets us an A. Uh, <laughs> so you go to pull up the camera to look and see if you can look around? Is what your idea is? To see if yeah. you see it? Yeah. As you put the camera up, you see a hand reach you. And, like, basically the second after you put it up, something grabs your throat. And it lifts oh. you into the air. And what everybody else sees is just is ash just like ha <laughs> like she drops okay. her, her camera and the um uh the the salt and she's being held into the air in the center I of the room spraying by my something. super soaker like, wildly in the area <laughs> Alrighty, um so yeah here let's do a plan 
uh, uh, yeah, all of you can have a plan. Why am I the one being attacked so much? Because you're the coolest. <laughs> oh, come on, I've been attacked. I, I fell down into a cellar and got... <laughs> I was being chased. <laughs> I've been attacked. I'm injured. Also, and I then... just like the vision. Basically, the only reason you get attacked right here is because I like the visual of you putting it up and something already being <laughs> basically at you. <laughs> like, Fatal. if you didn't put the camera up, you would have uh. never seen it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to do some of the salt water um, and start spraying it, if you guys are cool with that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I assume I, I, can, I can struggle. I can try to oh, struggle yeah. it. yeah. Do you want to start doing the incantation? I mean, I think everyone knows the incantation because we've said it a bunch of times. I mean, zero's not that great. <laughs> I can try no, to okay. say it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to very well. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to cover the base. We were supposed to circle the basement with salt or put salt down in the basement to, and then say the incantation. Uh, I okay. think he just said, say the incantation in the basement and then uh, you might need salt to hurt it. He didn't really specify an order. <laughs> oh, okay. At All least right. as far as I remember. Um, seems right. That's the order we're going with for now. If it's not. Uh, okay. So <laughs> nobody nobody can, nobody can, saw the hand except for Ash. So right yeah. now I'm just shooting in the general vicinity. Yeah, salt water. where her general okay. idea is and stuff. Um, so what are uh, Robert and Jean doing then? I'm going to say the incantation and um, guess where the ghost is with my fire poker. Alrighty. And then Robert. Uh, I'm going to say the incantation and go for the salt and try to throw the salt around the basement. Alrighty. That so, ash dropped. Here's what we do. Um, ash, I want you to roll uh, body force. Uh, give yourself plus one because everyone's... Or give yourself plus three because everyone is helping you. Um, I want Gene, Zero, and Robert to roll... Wait, who's saying the incantation? Was who, was anybody saying that? I think everyone but me because you know. And not me. I was I was shooting. I wasn't going to say it. Okay, Gene and me are saying it. I want zero to just roll body force plus two because you're using your crazy thing. And <laughs> I'm doing so plus one extra dice now. <laughs> ah, okay, cool with that thing. And then I yeah. want Gene and Robert to roll heart uh, heart charm. And then just tell me how many you get. You say heart charm, and I immediately think of Care Bears. Like, Care Bears, stare! <laughs> I want to be heart! <laughs> uh, two successes. All right. Thank God. I rolled one single dice and managed to get one single success. <laughs> nice. Hey! I got one success. All righty. And then let's see. So we got uh, three, four successes right now? Yeah, four. That's what I heard? Okay, two. Cool. You got two. Well, eight dice. I better get something. I, I got two. <laughs> you got two? Okay, so we got six successes. All right, so here's what happens. Um, you uh, both say the incantation almost at the exact same time, and you notice the thing, like, it was invisible. It immediately becomes seen. Like, it just pops into existence. And you hear it kind of, like, wince. And as it does, um, uh, uh, Ash kicks it in the chest, and it, like, drops her across the room. Um, and, it, and it just kind of startles back. And then as that happens, uh, uh, Zero shoots it with the, with the salt. And it, like, punches a hole through it. And then uh, you said you were throwing salt at it as well. It's almost like, it's almost <clears throat> like you just poured... Yeah, have you ever seen that, that sand <clears throat> that's water-resistant or whatever? When yeah. When you pull it out of the water, it just kind of melts. That's mm -hmm. basically what's happening to it. It's like, and it's like, and stuff. Like, because it's got the donkey noises and everything. And then it, it drops the axe, uh, and it starts to just kind of melt. And then as it gets kind of low on the ground, uh, Jean just takes her fire poker and just kicks its head off with it. Uh, and it just kind of melts to the floor. Um, and it, then it just kind of goes through the floor, almost like it never existed. And I grab the axe and I break the handle over my knee. <laughs> you try justice. to do that, but it just bruises your knee a little bit because it's like a really strong <laughs> thing in your child. <laughs> it's the intention. It was the intention that mattered. It's daytime now. Oh it has the rain stopped. Is 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 that how long this took? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, it is. Uh, it is morning now. Somehow time got all messed up. Maybe at one point when you teleported, more time went by than you thought. Um, but yeah, you, you can kind of see, 
uh, daylight's starting to kind of... So it's like dawn is starting to kind of come out through the house. Ooh. I'm just oh. sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> because you're happy. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> <laughs> um... Hey guys, you don't. Oh, go Sorry, ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, you guys don't think like Ghostbusters is like based on anything true, right? Because if it is, then uh, if Ghost causes electromagnetic fields, and we have a video camera, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully our footage survives. <laughs> um, I vote that we take the donkey head and burn it. Oh, it's not there anymore. It it melted awesome. through the floor as well. It Ooh, never I was. I say we carve our names. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and we record our names in the wall. Do we really want our names in a cursed house? I'm going home, guys. You can <laughs> 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 and, like, <laughs> out the door. Yeah, yeah you, let's, uh, just, let's go. We've got video of the house. I think that's enough. As let's... you start to go outside, uh, you hear what sounds like a big, big truck, like a four-wheeler truck, kind of start to drive up the path. And you can see as you walk out, uh, you go out through the kitchen door, um, which is the back door of the house. Technically, it's open now. Um, and you walk out, and you, you come around the house, and this big truck just kind of rolls up next to you. And you see the doors open, and two men that kind of look like service workers. They have, like, a construction helmet and, like, blue jumpsuits on. And they have a, a symbol of a triangle on their uh, chest. And what the truck looks like is, it kind of looks like a dumping truck. Not like a dump truck, like a garbage truck. One of those trucks that can have, like, gravel or something in the back, and it dumps it like that. They have one of those, and they stop in front of the house, and they, they look at their notes, and they look to you kids, and they're just like, Oh, what are your kids doing here? You're not supposed to be here. This is private property. I whisper to the other kids. I'm like, it's Illuminati. <laughs> it's big people. <laughs> it's big people. Oh, no, it's big people. Do you... Why don't you kids get out of here? It's not safe to be here. This is a condemned house. You're not supposed to. Be. As they're mid-sentence, uh, out of the front of the house, this gigantic spear of blood shoots through the front door and just impales both of the men, lifting them up into the air and chucking their bodies into the forest. Suddenly, the donkey house explodes into blood, and coming out of it is this gigantic, horrifying almost hydra looking thing imagine this but red uh, and it looks like this but imagine also every single one of its heads are donkey heads uh, and it bursts out of the walls and the house is just completely obliterated like it's just a, it, almost like the house exploded and this horrifying giant monster roars and it sounds like donkeys are like just screaming in pain as it does it um, and yeah, so there's a truck next to you, and then this gigantic horrifying monster is like, I thought, we're, I thought we were done. Time to leave. <laughs> uh, um, can any of you drive? Um, I, so I feel like because my family would have many cars, I would know how to drive. Sounds okay. good. Yeah, that sounds All like right, something the troublemaker yeah. would do. You steal the cars, definitely. Um, <laughs> yep. I, I smoke bomb out of there. <laughs> so I want... Um, I want, uh, Ash to roll body move with two plus, um, because you've driven cars before and that seems like a character trait. I want everybody else to roll mind investigate. Got one. Nice. Only like so many dice and I don't, and I don't get more than one or two. <laughs> two successes. Two successes. All right. Uh, zero. All right. Like me! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Named yourself so you could jinx yourself. I got zero successes. Very All righty. So, Mike, you have the ability to ask two questions. Uh, what is hidden here and what is it? What does it mean? Uh, how can I get into, out of, past something? And that's probably the only three that really apply to this situation. All right, definitely into out of get the hell out of here. Definitely um, the car. <laughs> <laughs> For one hundred like, percent. Yeah. But, oh, I meant well. Like, are there any are there any obvious barriers? Like, are there like bones walls coming up around us or? No. Uh, it seems like it's a well. Uh, actually, now that you mention it, uh, the car is. Damn it, of, Mike. 
sort of getting a little bit trapped as the blood is starting to surround you guys a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's how that one goes. So you, getting past something, it might be a trick, but the car is probably the best way to do it. Either way, All I right. want to go check the guys to see if there's keys on them. Oh, they got thrown somewhere <laughs> deep in the forest. You have no idea where those bodies are. Oh, you know what a hot wire as well? Hey, <laughs> I'm the troublemaker. Yeah, um, I'm the troublemaker. I think I would probably know how to hot wire a car. Uh, Mike, you have one more question. Uh, what were the other options, sorry? Uh, what is hidden here and what is it? Uh, what does it mean? Those two. Uh, let's do what does it mean. What does it mean? So, uh, you notice as everybody's basically scrambling to get into the truck, uh, which has been left on, so you're good. Um, you notice what's in the back of the truck. Um, surprisingly, in the back of the truck is this giant gravel dump truck is just a huge mound of salt. <laughs> All right, I yell that out to everyone so they know. I think they were I think they knew why they were by the way, Ash, I think it's amazing that you know how to drive a dump truck full of salt. <laughs> well, I, I play a lot of video can drive games. A truck. <laughs> what, I play a body? lot of car video games. It's cool. I got it. You, you flash your Class B license. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait. So how much did you roll, Ash? I got one. You got one? Okay. So n with this new knowledge and the, the car slowly being surrounded, uh, so all of you are getting into the truck or how are you doing this? Yes. Yeah. I, I immediately get into the for the driver's seat. Alrighty. I, I jump into the ba I jump into the back to be able to release the gate. The, oh, like the on the dump truck. Yeah, to make sure it can actually fall out the salt. I mean, is it? <laughs> I don't know exactly how it's worked because usually a dump truck. You still wait. How how is this? It's one of those ones that has like a lever inside the truck that makes the bed go like that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. back in, I get into the <laughs> into the cab. <laughs> All right, so now that you're in the car, what do you intend to do with it? You you do whatever you're about to say you do because you rolled right. Drive right. in a big circle around this nonsense and traffic yeah. forever. Yeah, so I get into the car and I start to drive. I, I, turn, I turn the car around so it's facing the house. So I, I immediately start to drive in a circle. And, I, and uh, I think Robert has the same idea since he saw the salt. So he probably knows when to release the lever. All righty. So you're driving and you're, the car is like kind of lifting off the uh, a one because you're you're turning it too wide because you're not the best driver you're still a child, um, but I like mean, and you're drift. panicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could so, drift. You could drift. I'm, still, I'm and, still trying to shoot the super soaker of salt water. Yeah, but you're just kind of reaching. <laughs> Basically, anytime any of the little like tendrils try to get close, it like gets shot away by by you <laughs> shooting at it, um, and uh, you're releasing salt slowly around it in piles. Uh, and you finally surround it. The thing freaks out and just kind of shoots skyward. Um, but there's still enough salt inside of the truck. Bury it, Ash. How do we do that? Tilt it Ooh. more. We could... I could... We could... Okay. What we could probably do is crash the car, crash the truck into the house. That sounds like fun. Everyone get ready to bail. bail. Yeah, no, okay. why, don't, why don't why don't you guys get out of the car? Because then that way, if I, you know, it's like not everybody has to go. Why, why don't you get out of the car, too? Do we have anything to place, like, on Shovel. the accelerator? There's probably, there's got to be a rock somewhere that there's we can There's a bunch of rocks outside. We'll yeah. got something we, to do that. Okay, yeah. I was like, do we have a shovel we can maybe wedge into it? Oh, yeah, you do, <laughs> actually. Yeah, shovel, you could yeah. use the yeah. shovel. Yeah. The shovel the should axe. really have. You do have the axe still. Oh yeah, Ooh, we, so we good, could do uh, that. So yeah, so yeah, we could we could. Uh, I think it's good to throw the axe into the salt pile. It'll be good. The axe is haunted. <laughs> the axe is haunted. It might as well be. So the shovel is going on the it. accelerator, and yeah. the axe is being thrown into the salt dump truck. Yeah, so it's okay. it's uh it's wedged between the accelerator and the steering wheel, so it keeps it straight. All right. And yeah, and then and then uh so. So and, I want. Uh, so that's what you're. So you're basically gonna jam it so it goes forward, and then all of you are yeah. gonna jump out. Is the idea? Yeah. Yes. I want everybody to roll body move. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Zero. Yes. <laughs> See. I did Everyone. not succeed. 
I got five fours. Does that matter? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be so proud of me. I rolled three. Oh, nice. Oh so you rolled body move, right? So who yeah. didn't succeed? Me. <laughs> you can pick two of them to give a success to. <laughs> But didn't we all jump out before she did it, though? I know, I told them to jump out before, though, too. No, it's, it, it'll be fine, but it is funny. Okay, uh, <laughs> who's going to lose an arm? <laughs> uh, G needs her reading hand, so she can't lose her arm. I'm shooting the super soaker. <laughs> yeah, maybe right, Zero I doesn't can... notice. <laughs> Okay, I guess, uh, Robert, do you volunteer? I volunteer. You I am tribute. To stay okay. behind, or the... The one who not doesn't get succeed. Yeah. The one who doesn't succeed. Alright, so, uh, Ash says, Okay, everybody jump out! And she jams that in. She jumps out the side. She takes Jean with her. Zero, who's already kind of outside of the car, decides to drop the gun and jumps out. But Robert doesn't get the memo enough. And he can't get it. He actually buckled in. And he can't get a seatbelt undone. And so, it sounds like, like something car, I do. The car just like... You just see him screaming as the car just crashes right into this mountain, this pillar of blood. And he screams so loud and everything. But you see the blood blood just explode as it does and uh and it starts to kind of shrivel and get and like die as you see it slowly turn into a person uh like and then the person just starts to melt into that skeleton you saw before and then the skeleton turns into bones and it crumbles to the floor skeleton's axe... not already bones what Shut up. <laughs> no, a skeleton is when it's complete. A bones are when it's in pieces. <laughs> so also, comes... also, real quick, were we like, were we like in front row of sh uh, like of a Shamu kind of thing where we got blasted with yeah, blood? Yeah, you just like blood all over you and everything. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, it, it's sitting there like this, and it just it goes. The axe told me, and then it crumbles into dust. And all that's left is an axe in a ruined car sitting on its side. Robert's coughing. Uh, right, you're injured. Um, down. <laughs> uh, did anybody get broken, by the way? Like, did you get all of the, the, the conditions at all? No. Uh, they haven't really been assigned that much after we all just checkmark scared forever. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's yeah. fair. So you're injured. You're coughing um, as you climb out of the side of this car and sit on top of it, and that's all that she wrote about the donkey house. <laughs> it is now just a heaping mass. Like, the blood even just kind of seems to turn into fog and disappear into the sky. Fuck, Sister Julie and Father Ted are gonna be so pissed at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covered in blood. I've been out all night. <laughs> I've been out all night. <laughs> I'm gonna be so grounded. Priorities. Or worse, expelled. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna be sent to another orphanage now. <laughs> That's real dark, dude. Oh, <laughs> not 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 evil skeleton dark, but you know, super dark. <laughs> not Reality kids dark. transitioning <laughs> their heads dark. <laughs> um. So the axe told him to do it. So the axe is still there. Well, the axe was in the salt, right? And then everything got disappeared? Yeah, right? so now there's just an axe sitting in basically a pile of salt. Yeah, let's leave that there. Don't touch it. Yeah. And we should probably contact uh, whoever those, like, the next of kin for those maintenance workers. <laughs> <laughs> also find out why they were driving around a bunch of salt. <laughs> I think the Illuminati will take care of that. <laughs> Yeah, this seems like the thing where you tell one cop and it all gets resolved. <laughs> yeah. The men in black show up. Yeah, basically. <laughs> With yeah, that. that's, uh, let's leave this place. This is horrible. Yeah, yeah. are our bikes still here? Yeah, also yeah. I'm going to put a firecracker in Kyle's locker because fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even do anything. <laughs> 
if he wasn't involved with this. <laughs> you labeled him as a bully, so he inherently already has done something. <laughs> also, he's been there 17 times. Come on, what's 16. wrong with the dude? He said 17. Oh, why didn't he fix liar. this? He's older than us. He's supposed to be the responsible one. Why didn't he fix it? He never found the lock. <laughs> um, but he's okay. half a big person. <laughs> he's half it had him in exactly 30 years. There you go. Yeah. That's gotta be it. I don't think anybody wrong else place, found wrong the place, wrong time. Alrighty, and with that, we cut to the epilogue, and we return to Miss Lake's history class at 2.30 on a Monday. We've just now sat through several presentation. The one about Tim Allen is just wrapping up. <laughs> it's now your turn to play your video. So here's what I want you guys to do. I don't know if you took notes about Lawrence Coswell, but if you took notes about Lawrence Coswell, do not look at them. Each one of you has to tell me one unique fact about Lawrence Coswell in order for you to get an A. Right now you're at B. But if you can all tell me a true fact about Lawrence Coswell, I will bump it up to an A. I'll go first. Lawrence Coswell wanted somebody older but to portray him. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that is not true, sir. Well, he told me. He told me in person. <laughs> that, he was, that, he was that won't hold up in Miss Lake's history class. <laughs> All right, I'll go last then, you guys. <laughs> oh my god, his last trip was to, his last expedition was to Peru. Boom, there's one. Lauren, Lawrence Coswell favored manses over mansions. Technically true. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, his bad turn at his bad expedition was on Cannibal Mountain. <laughs> there you go, that's a good one. That's a good callback. Ah, <sighs> uh, crap, I can't remember his name. Lawrence Coswell was really tight with Frank Richards. Is that his name? Damn it! <laughs> all right, sorry with guys. That, you all get Matthew Goody. Sam, so yeah, Sebastian Good Sir would have been a good one. With that though, because you did, did you do four scenes for the movie, or did you only? Do we did. I think we technically we did. did more than four. Like, yeah. I want to say you got four. You call it four. Yeah. Four seemed right, uh, and you also had some pretty crazy special effects. Um, <laughs> Miss Lake just goes, oh, a little, little off the rails, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, artistic. I'm happy to see some creativity. I'm an art major myself, but, um, yeah, okay, I give you kids a B plus. Did it, did Like I said, guys, I was doing pass, no pass. Also, there was some more important shit going on. <laughs> I'd be like, come on, Miss Lake, we almost died. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all say. <laughs> and then, and, with... and the fact, and the fact is, he did want somebody older, older to <laughs> You only know that because his fucking ghost told you. <laughs> There's no way this then... lake could corroborate that statement. <laughs> but then it's I great also... because that totally sounds like something Zero would have said and tried to hold up in a classroom, but it just wouldn't go. Over. <laughs> I also say it's like you know we also help lift the curse. Sure. Go kids. <laughs> I think that I think that Miss Lake probably thinks that we all got like carbon monoxide poisoning and that we did almost die, but not from ghosts. <laughs> but not from ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know those missing maintenance workers we found. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, actually, we cut to the second part of the epilogue. We cut to the donkey house, or at least what's left of it. The cleanup crew has arrived, and the area has been quarantined off. Samples are being taken, more salt is being poured on the foundation, and the rubble is being cleared and burned. We see two office workers from the prologue overseeing the work being done. There's a man in the background wearing a hazmat suit holding the axe, and he puts it into a, a case, and he locks the case, and they put it in the back of a truck that also has that triangle on it. And the man uh, from the prologue says, What can happen over the course of a weekend? Yeah, yeah, you got me there. So, how many did we lose? We lost three field agents and two cleanup. The older man kicks a donkey mask that's half destroyed on the ground. That's a damn shame. HQ is going to have our hides. That's not all. Apparently some kids are the ones who stopped this. God damn it. Relax, we have their information. Their age works against them. Everyone thinks they have overactive imaginations. Needless to say, if they try anything stupid, Delta Green will be watching them. And that's the oh. ending. Delta Green? So you mean green like the Illuminati eye on the dollar bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
eight, but yeah, eight mysterious years. Mysterious ending. Eight um, years later, I'm uh, I go to see Shrek in the movie theater. <laughs> and I experience PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get. <laughs> never go to a petting zoo ever again and your parents don't know why <laughs> can't watch Eddie Murphy ever again never <laughs> the nutty professor is ruined for me <laughs> it used to be your favorite movie <laughs> and with that that is the end of the cracked and crooked bats brought to you by schmuckies if it's not schmuckies get back in the truck <laughs> Only if it has a triangle. Uh, what we usually tend to do on these live streams is, uh, before we sign off, we say who we are and what our favorite part of the scenario was. Um, so I'll let all of you guys go first if you want to, uh, because I'm the GM, so I'll go last. Because <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> I'm the boss. Them the bricks. All right, my character was Robert, and... My favorite part is, honestly, I'm more of an action kind of person when it comes to these games, so the ending was pretty hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, my name... So, wait, we're doing our character name. Or are we uh, you can do both if you want. However you just want to, yeah. All right. I was Zero, my name is Massimo, and my favorite part was all the fucking raccoon <laughs> <laughs> So many raccoons. That's fucking raccoon! <laughs> 15 great. years later, I'm raising and, like, domesticating raccoons. You're on a raccoon farm. Welcome to Joe Exotic. Welcome to Zero Exotic's raccoon farm. Oh, God. I want to see that one shot. <laughs> oh, okay. I, Gina, I said Jean. Um, I, I like the structure of, I think it's, um, I've never done a one shot before, and so I like how the beginning was, like, mystery and like exploring and then it really escalated to the blood explosion i just thought the like ramp up was really cool <laughs> <laughs> thanks um my name's alicia i played ash um it's kind of hard to pinpoint down which scene was my favorite because i generally don't do horror or scary I hated them all <laughs> <laughs> i hated them all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but I guess I really enjoyed the part where Dave was just like, roll another dice because your comrades believe in you. <laughs> just like, oh, they just said I should do it. So <laughs> you, believe, you like the camaraderie. That's great. <laughs> I don't, but like you said that there's camaraderie when everybody was just like, you should do it, Ash. And I'm yeah. like, oh, people believe okay. in you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm Dave, I was the keeper tonight. Uh, my favorite part was the fact that I completely made up half of that game on the fly. <laughs> um, so the way that that scenario works, how it really works, is that depending on what everybody's most interested in, you can change it to, to be ghosts that are also serial killers or some horrible blob creature that lives in the walls. Um, and the first time I ran it, it was a horrible blob creature that ran, uh, that lived in the walls, but this time I was running it, I was like, I'm gonna make it about murderous ghosts, so then I, I transitioned to that, and it was so much fun to just fuck with you guys. <laughs> I was just like, this is so good. <laughs> it turned into a blob at the end, though. I still made it do that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or it could about both. Kyle. I Kyle! Like <laughs> Kyle! It should have had Kyle's face. Oh. <laughs> Why? He showed up once. <laughs> it turns out Kyle's is, is in Miss Lake's class too because he's just been held back. So <laughs> he's, been held back. he's been held back decades because Kyle is a ghost. <laughs> and with that, we are the Mythos Mystery Society signing off. Mm -hmm.